Hi guys, welcome back. In this video I will be discussing uh, the first of two <coughs> sorting algorithms for arrays. And this uh, algorithm will be the bubble sort algorithm. Okay? The other one we'll look at is the selection sort. We'll start with bubble sort. Okay, so the bubble sort uh, has as its primary advantage uh, simplicity. Okay, it's easy to understand and it's easy to implement. Okay, uh, its drawback is that it can be very slow. Okay, and you'll see why as we go through this little demo with the playing cards. Okay, so I have uh, what looks like eight cards here arranged in a random order. Okay. So basically the idea of this algorithm is to start by comparing the first two values. Okay. Computers can only compare two values at a time. They can't look at this entire array and you know, sort it uh, all in one go. Right? We have to do it uh, basically element by element. Okay. And so what the bubble sort does is it starts by looking at the first two elements, okay? And um, what it does is it determines if they are in order, okay? If they are, it leaves them alone, and then it'll move to the next, the next element and look at the next two, okay? If 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 they're not in order, then it swaps them, okay? And then what it does is it continues repeating this process over and over, right? Looking at the first two, swapping them if they're out of order, or leaving them alone, moving or leaving them alone and then it'll move to the next element to the next element compare the two swap them if they're out of order or leave them alone and it keeps doing that until it's the end of the array right if it's done any swaps at all right if it's done at least one or multiple swaps then it repeats the process over and over and over again until you're done okay so it knows if a swap's been done or not by using a flag variable okay so I'll use this card here to represent my flag. Okay, when it's up like this, then the swap will be false. If it's on its side, then that indicates that I did a swap. Okay, so let's uh, let's step through this algorithm. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's, let's see how this will work. Okay, so the way I like to implement it is I start by looking at the f the second element in the array and I compare it with the previous one. Okay, that makes it easier uh, to stop. Uh, for me, it makes more sense to do that. So that way, uh, my end condition when I'm, when I'm finished traversing the array uh, seems more logical to me to do it that way. Okay, so we're going to start here. We're going to look at this two here, right? Second, the second element, and we're going to say, okay, is the previous element less than or or equal to? Is it, are these two in order? Well, it just so happens that these two aren't in order, so we're going to swap them. Okay. We swap them, and since I did a swap, I set my flag. Oops, I set my flag to true. Okay. All right. Now we move to the next element. Okay. Next element is eight and seven. Well, is the previous value less than? Yep, they're in order. Leave it alone. Move to uh, the next element, which is the jack. Uh, are they in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Move to the next element, which is a three. Look at the previous element. Are they in order? Nope. So we have to swap them. Okay. And we set our flag again to true for the for the uh, that we did a swap. Then we move to the next element. Okay. Are these two in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Move to the next element. Are these two in order? Nope. Got to swap them. Okay. So we swap these two guys. And then we set the swap flag to true. And then we move to the next element. Okay, we say, okay, is uh, are these two in order? Nope. And then we move them. Okay, and that's the end of our first pass, right? But the array still isn't in order, so we're going to have to repeat this whole process again. So we check our swap flag here, right? And it's true. That indicates that we have done a swap. So we're going to repeat this process. Okay. Set the uh, for the next iteration. We set our swap flag back to false, and then we start over again from the second element. Okay, are these in order? Yep, leave them alone. Move to the next element. Are these in order? Yep, leave them alone. Move to the next element. 
Are these in order? Nope, we're going to swap them. Okay, there's our swap. Set our swap flag true. Okay, and then we move to the next element. Okay. Are these two in order? Yep, leave them alone. Move to the next element. Are these two in order? Nope, got to swap them. We swap them, and then we set our, our flag to true, our swap flag to true, and we move to the next element. Are these two in order? Nope. Got to swap them. Okay. And then we set our swap flag to true. Okay. Then we move to the final element, right here, and we say, are these two in order? Yep. So we leave them alone. Okay. So, uh, since our swapped flag is set to true, we're going to do another iteration. Okay, at the top of the iteration, we set this back to false, and we go back and we look at these things again. Okay, we start here and we look at the previous element, compare them, are they in order? Yep, leave them alone. Move to the next element, are they in order? Nope, we're going to swap them. We swap them, and then we set our swap flag to true. Okay, then we move to the next element, are these two in order? Yep, leave them alone. Move to the next two, are they in order? Nope, we need to swap them. Okay, swap them, set the swap flag, move to the next element. Are these in order? Nope, swap them. Okay. Oh. Set our swap flag, move to the next element. Are these in order? Yep, leave them alone. Are these in order? Yep, leave them alone. Okay. Well, our swap flag is set to true, we're going to do another iteration. Okay. Top of the iteration, we set our swap flag to false. And we start at the second element again. Are these in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Move to the next element. Are they in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Next element. They're not in order, so we're going to swap them. Swap them. Set the swap flag to true. Okay. Move to the next element. Not in order. Got to swap them. Swap them. Set the next flag to true. Move to the next element. These guys are in order. Leave them alone. Next element, they're in order, leave them alone. Next element, they're in order, leave them alone. Okay, we're at the end of the iteration. Is the swap flag set to true? It is, so we're going to do another iteration. Top of the iteration, set the swap flag to false. And we go to the, let me, let me straighten these guys out a little bit. Okay, we go to uh, the second element, compare these two. Are they in order? Yep, leave them alone. Go to the next two. Are they in order? Nope. We're going to swap them. Do a swap. And set our swap flag. Move to the next element. Are these in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Are these in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Go to the next element. Are they in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Go to the next element. Are they in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Go to the final element. Are they in order? Yep. Leave them alone. Check our swap flag. We did a swap, so we have to go through one more iteration. As humans, we can tell that these are all in order, right? But a computer can't, right? It can only look at two values at a time. It can't look at this whole list together, this whole array together. So that's what the swap flag's for, right? If we made a, uh, if we made a swap, we got to go through it and do it again. So top of the iteration, set our swap flag to false. Go back to element one, check the previous element. Are they in order? Yep, leave them alone. Next element, they're in order, leave them alone. Next element, they're in order, leave them alone. Next element, and we repeat that until we get to the very end, right? And they're all in order. We didn't have to do any swaps. So our swapped flag is at false, and so since it's false, the loop ends, we're done, and we have a sorted array, okay? So that's how the array works, okay? We're doing a series of comparisons in a series of swaps until this swap flag uh, is no longer true. And so long as this swap flag is true, we keep iterating, repeating the process over and over and over again. So what we're going to end up with is a set of nested loops in our implementation. And uh, let's take a look at the code for this. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's write an algorithm here. Okay. Uh, the bubble sort algorithm. Okay. So... Uh, we're going to repeat, we're going to repeat 
the following steps steps until swap flag is false okay so we're going to initialize the swap flag flag to true okay so that'll that'll allow us to enter into our loop okay all right so uh, if this okay start looking start examining start at the second element of the array if uh, if the previous element is uh, greater than the current element swap them okay current element we're going to swap them set swap flag Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot one step here. I need to uh, set the flag, set swap flag to false. Right at the top of each iteration, we're going to reset that guy. Right? Set swap flag to true. Okay. Uh, Otherwise, okay, so here, if the previous element is greater than the current element, right, then we're going to swap them and set the swap flag to true. Otherwise, um, move to the next element. Okay. All right, and we're going to, this is going to be a loop here. So, for each element in the array, okay, and we're going to do these things. Okay, so let's 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 look at this. Okay, so initially, step one, we're going to set our swap flag to true. That's so we can enter into our loop here, right? This is going to be a loop here. Um, so you know, maybe step two: repeat the following steps until the flag swap flag is false. Okay, um, start at the second element of the array, right? And then we're going to set the swap flag to false because we haven't swapped anything yet okay and then step five for each element in the array we're going to do these things we're going to do this these comparisons okay all right so step six if the previous element is greater than the current element swap them and set the swap flag to true okay otherwise move on to the next element so that's that's basically the uh, the algorithm in a nutshell. So uh, what's this code going to look like? Well, let's uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, we're going to need a we're going to implement this as a function. All right, and um, we're going to need a prototype. We don't have to return anything. Okay, we're going to uh, do what's known as an in-place sort of this array, which means that the elements in the original array we passed to the function are going to be swapped inside the array. And uh, remember that uh, arrays, when passed to functions, they're passed by reference. So we're making changes to the original array, right? Which is fine, because we want to sort that original array. Okay, so let's call this function mobile sort. And why don't we, to make this interesting, to show that we can do all of these data types, including objects, why don't we make, why don't we sort an array of strings? Okay, so let's do uh, a string array. Okay, so we're going to pass it an array of strings, and we have to pass the size of the uh, array. Okay, and um, I think that's everything that we need to pass to it. Because right? we're gonna we're gonna sort this uh, this array, and we only need to know the size. We don't have to. We're not searching for anything. And we don't need to return anything. Okay. So let's do a pound include up here, so we can get access to the string object. Okay. And again, this sort will work for any data type. I'm just using strings to show you that we can uh, we can sort up objects as well. All right. So there's our prototype. So let's do a um, function definition. String, um, we'll just call it string S. Uh, and in 
print size for the size of this thing. All right. So what's this code going to look like? All right. So we're going to need a swap flag. Okay. So I'll just call this swap flag, and we'll initialize it to. Um, well, you know, I can actually initialize it to false. What I'll do is I'll use a do while loop. Okay. If I use a do while loop, then this will cause uh, the sort to happen at least one time, right? So that way I don't have to worry about um, dealing with that. Okay. All right. So let's do a do while loop. Okay. Do while. Do while uh, swap flag. Okay. If swap flag is true, we're going to repeat this thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so at the top of the iteration, at the very top, the very beginning of each iteration, we have to reset the swap flag to false. Okay. So I guess I didn't have to initialize this, writing it this way, because right? I'm going to be setting it to false here. Okay. So there, just leave it like that. All right, so inside here we're going to have to use a nested loop, right? Because we're going to continuously repeat iterations uh, until the no swaps are done, right? But each iteration we're going to have to traverse the entire um, array. So let's use a for loop to do that. Now remember I said that we're going to start the way I like to implement this. We're starting at the second element of the array. So we'll initialize our counter here to 1. Okay, i less than size, uh, i plus plus. Okay, so this part right here, let's let's set our swap flag to false for each iteration. Okay, and this is going to traverse the array. Okay, uh, starting at second element. Okay, all right. So for each element now, we're going to compare the value in that element to the value in the previous element. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. If uh, s of i is um, less than s of i minus 1, then we're going to swap. Okay, if this is true, we're going to swap. This means they're out of order. Okay. Out of order if this is true. Okay. So now we're going to need to uh, write some code to do the actual swapping. Okay. We're going to need a temporary holding place okay, to hold um, the value uh, stored in the element that we're swapping to. Okay. So let's call this uh, temp. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're, we're going to temporarily hold uh, we'll hold uh, s uh, the previous element. Okay. That will be the one that we hold on to. Okay. Now we're going to oops should be equals not minus. Now we're going to write our current element into the previous one. Okay. S of i minus 1 equals S of i. Okay. Remember, i is our counter. It's This is going to contain the index of the element that we're currently examining. Okay. All right. And then once that's done, once we've copied the current element into the previous one, we can now go back to the temporary holding location, which was holding the value inside the uh, previous element, and we can copy that into the current element. Okay, so s of i equals or set to uh, temp. Okay. All right. So here's the swap code. Code. Oops. All right. Then we need to do one last thing. We have to update that swap flag. Okay. So swap flag equals true. We did a swap. Okay. If they're out of order. Okay. Swap the two values. We have to use a temporary holding variable to do that, so we don't just overwrite uh, the previous 
value with the current value and have both locations uh, holding the same value, right? So we use a temporary variable to deal with that, and then we update the swap line. All right. Okay, so that should do it. Let's see, am I forgetting anything in here? I don't think that I am. All right, so let's just do a quick compile to make sure that I haven't uh, messed anything up syntactically. Doesn't look like it. And uh, let's create an array of strings. String um, names. Okay, uh, and we'll use an initialization list uh, equals. Put them in random order, Hank. John, Viva, um, Messiah, uh, and one more call. Okay, so I got five names. They're in a random order, and we're going to sort them. Okay, so let's print out. Uh, let's write a, a for loop here to print out the values currently in the names array. Four uh, int i equals zero. All right, let's then well, there's five there. I plus plus. Let's use a constant again. Const int size equals five. And put size here. All right, and then we'll do a c out uh, names i. So let's test it so far. Let's just do compile here, see if I messed anything up. No, I didn't. Okay. So we can see that they're not they're not in order, right? We're, we're, we want to sort this by alphabetical order. Hank and John and Thieber are in order, but then Messiah and Paul aren't. Okay. All right. So let's call our uh, our sort function. Okay. B sort. We're going to pass it names. And uh, the size of the array. Okay. There we go. And then let's print this thing out again. Okay. Just to see if it worked. Okay. There we go. Oops. Uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me put a couple spaces in there, a couple lines in there. So we can tell where one ends and one begins, right? Okay. Okay, here's the binary sort function call. Oops, bubble sort, excuse me, not binary sort, bubble sort function call. Right. And uh, there's some spaces. We're going to print out the original array, and then this is going to display the sorted array. Okay. So let me put some comments here. Print uh, original unsorted array, and then we'll print the sorted array. Okay. Print the now sorted array. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, so Hank, John, Theba, that's in order. Messiah, Paul, out of order. After the sort, H, J, M, P, T. Second. Second dis uh, display of output, the second printing, right? Everything's in order, okay? So everything worked great. So here we can see that the bubble sort will work for string objects, right? It could, we could just as easily have written this code um, to sort integers, floats. The only thing we would have had to have changed was the type of array that we were passing to it, right? Would have worked just the same for any other data type. Uh, well, we would have had to change this uh, this temporary variable too, right? To reflect that. Okay, so uh, that's the bubble sort. Um, pretty straightforward, uh, but uh, it's, uh, well, it's pretty simple to understand, pretty simple to implement, right? We did it with very few lines of code. Um, we've taken a look at the uh, algorithm here. Uh, the benefits, again, simple to understand, simple to implement. The drawbacks, this can be very slow. Okay, um, so 
that uh, about covers everything I wanted to show you on the bubble sort algorithm. So, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. Okay, great. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.